this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and I'm excited to bring you the LG Google Nexus 5. Uh, it's a device that's been, well, rumbling around on the web for a while. Lots of leaks, lots of rumours. Um, finally was released oh, basically this morning. Um, went on sale here in the UK um, following press release yesterday, uh, yesterday evening. So we're going to do a quick unboxing video of the uh, Nexus 5, which uh, Sam excited to try out because I think it's going to be quite an awesome phone. So let's take a look inside the box. We have the Nexus 5 itself immediately on top and I have the white version here. Uh, also available in black but we're going to come back to that in just a moment. So also in the box, uh, I think it seems to be in there, it's just packaging. Also inside we have uh, the little tool for removing the SIM tray. We then have the Nexus 5 Quick Start Guide. And a micro USB to USB sync charge cable. I won't bother to unbox that, I'm sure you've all seen what they look like. And then finally we have the USB charger. So it's got a USB socket on the back and a UK 3 pin plug plug in this wall for charging the uh, charging unit up uh, and it's a 1.2 amp output version that's all we get in the box you'll notice there's no um, other accessories there are there isn't a wired headset uh, or headphones or anything like that supplied with it um, we do just get um, well what you've already seen frankly so uh, take a look at the handset itself and as I say this has been very eagerly anticipated um, the latest Google branded um, Nexus 5 um, smartphone. Uh, so on the front, first of all, we have uh, the display which is a 4.95 inch, it's a true HD display, so it's 1080 by 1920 pixels. Uh, it's an IPS uh, display, capacitive touch screen, supporting 16 million colour reproduction, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. As I say, it's a true HD display, covered with uh, Corning Gorilla Glass 3, um, to obviously protect that screen there as well. Uh, we have a forward-facing camera, uh, which is actually a 1.3 megapixel forward-facing, and uh, that does support um, HD video recording as well. Uh, loudspeaker, there you can see, which is slightly white to match the back, uh, and then ambient light and proximity sensors there as well. Uh, looking around, we have on the left-hand side an up and down volume control. Uh, not a great deal else. You'll see these little plastic tabs, which I'm going to leave just in on just for the moment, um, that's just a protective film around the edges that you can see there. Uh, on the bottom uh, we have the loudspeakers on both sides, loudspeaker grills, and then a three, uh, the micro USB sync charge connector. Uh, not a great deal to see up on the right hand side, there is the uh, power button right at the top on the side, which I, I prefer being on the side quite frankly, uh, under the thumb when you are sort of using it that way. Um, doesn't quite suit you, I suppose, if you're a left-hander. Uh, you can obviously reach around with the other the other finger, but uh, nevertheless, it's on the side. I think it's just a little bit better than putting it on the top, especially with a slightly larger uh, device as per this. Uh, the other thing that we have here is, if you can make that out, just to angle it towards the light there, like so. Uh, that's our SIM card tray, so we have a micro SIM there, and obviously the little tool that comes with it, it allows us to actually eject that tray and install the SIM card. On top, not a great deal else to see, there's another hole there which is actually a secondary microphone that uh, helps us with noise cancellation and uh, the socket there is a 3.5mm headphone socket uh, for obviously using headphones or a wired headset, none of which are supplied unfortunately. So on the back we have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera, um, it does support, or it does have um, image stabiliser, it's an optical image stabiliser. Um, built in there as well, so that's a, a pretty cool thing to have uh, and does improve obviously the quality of uh, the shots, especially um, you know if you're in a sort of fast or moving um, shaky type of environment, um, obviously hence the, uh, the image stabiliser. There's also an LED flash on the rear as well, so we've got that Nexus logo and text on the back, um, as again just the text in the, on the back of the device itself has been subject to a fair amount of rumour and speculation as to which orientation it was going to be. Uh, that's really all there is to see on the back, and well, there is the little LG logo at the bottom there, obviously this is manufactured by LG, 
um, but uh, is a sort of co-branded, if you like, uh, Google Phone. So let's just uh, let me just power up, and I will need to remove the uh, front screen protector slightly, unfortunately, I suppose, because it does have some text on there. That's going to make that a bit harder for us to to see the screen. So let's take that off. Put that to one side as well. Um, so, I mean, looking at the handset like that, it's not really obvious as to where the edges of the screen lie. I mean, you can obviously angle it to the light, but it's a very, very much an edge-to-edge -edge display, or very close to being completely edge-to-edge -edge display, um, which is obviously quite impressive. Run, let me run down the specification. First of all, let me see the size. It's 137.9, so 100, basically 138 millimeters from top to bottom. You are 69.2 wide, and a really thin um, 8.6 millimeters. Uh, in terms of overall thickness and weight as well is um, pretty impressive uh, you might be forgiven taking it out of the box um, in thinking that the battery isn't installed um, because it is really quite light in the hand uh, 130 grams um, and because it is a large device I think you know it does feel um, even lighter perhaps than the actual overall numbers might suggest um, so that's pretty impressive uh, we've already mentioned the display, but let's uh, just uh, mention that again. It is a full HD or true HD display, so 1080p by 1920 pixels. Um, Corning Gorilla Glass 3 uh, on the front of that as well. And uh, it is full capacity multi-touch, supporting all 10 fingers of input. Uh, the capacity and storage capacity of this one, this is the 16 gigabyte model um, here in the UK. Uh, there is also a 32 gigabyte model, but uh, at the moment, uh, and for the time being, uh, the 32 gigabyte model is exclusive to um, O2. Um, so you can't get the 16 gig model on any other network, and it doesn't appear to be available even SIM free at the moment. So here we are with a SIM free 16 gigabyte model. We've got 2 gig of built in RAM, um, and we also have um, a 2.0. 26 gigahertz processor. Um, it is a Snapdragon 800, um, so that should be pretty quick. And I'm looking forward to running a benchmark on that in uh, just a few minutes um, as well to see how we um, actually perform. The 8 megapixel camera on the back, as I say, is uh, supports or has a optical image stabilizer. I'm just going to take that cover off the back as well so in preparation for taking a couple of pictures in a minute. Uh, forward facer is 1.3. We have built in GPS, assisted GPS uh, supported there. We uh, also support geotagging um, courtesy obviously of the uh, GPS that's built in. We have Wi Fi 802.11, uh, A, B, G, N, and the AC standard, which is obviously the new gigabit um, AC, uh, it being the gigabit Wi Fi standard. So that's pretty good. Uh, the only other, there's only a couple of other devices. On the market at the moment with um, that standard built in one of which is the, uh, the new iphone 5s but uh, so this has it we also have uh, bluetooth 4 um, and uh, in terms of other stuff we have uh, ambient light sensors proximity sensors um, there is a i think there's a thermometer uh, pressure sensor and a hall sensor so uh, it's quite well um, packed out with uh, those g sensors and all that kind of stuff in there as well I think that kind of covers the uh, basics in terms of the specification. So let's just uh, go back in here. Uh, we are English United Kingdom. So we'll quickly nip through the setup so that we can just take a quick look at um, what we have. So we're connected initially to our Wi Fi network. You can see that we have the uh, QWERTY keyboard there and we have a landscape QWERTY. A little bit different. We are obviously running Android 4.4 uh, KitKat, the first device to go on the market to actually have um, the new version of the uh, Android OS, so 4.4. Uh, so let's go and sign in. So let's, uh, we're authenticating. And we should be able to get an IP address in just a second, hopefully. It's strange how some devices seem to do take a little longer to actually connect up. There we go. Uh, there is an update that we need to download, that's uh, reasonably irritating that we down need to initially download an update, but uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll pause the recording and resume after that's installed. Uh, 
Okay, so our update is now installed. Uh, it took around uh, probably about 10 minutes uh, all in, so it wasn't too bad. So uh, let's carry on through the setup. Looks like we're going to have to do that uh, signing in again, so let's go and do that. There we go, let me just sign in. And we will sign into our Google account. Let me do that. Okay, so we let that sign in. And we'll just skip all of these uh, bits as much as possible. And get through it as, uh, as good as we can. Maybe later. And there we go, so uh, that's our startup. Um, obviously, being a Google uh, phone, it is a completely um, vanilla installation and um, there's no overlay on the uh, Android OS. So, we've got the Google applications there in a Play Store, uh, we've got the phone, Hangouts, uh, the launcher, um, Chrome, and the camera. Then, we've got the back home and the list of uh, the recent apps button to the side, Google search and voice search at the top. I um, have to say Google have been, or oh, LG jointly I suppose, have been quite clever with the um, use of the imagery in the background there because uh, it really does show the display off rather nicely. Um, so it's a really good looking display. We do have just the two panels at the moment. Uh, so in the second one we have uh, a library with uh, Play music, uh, play movies, playbooks, and play games uh, there as well. Um, and if we do a long press on the panel there, we can add additional screens. Uh, we can change the wallpapers, add widgets, and change various settings. We can use uh, Google Now, uh, phone search, and all that kind of stuff there. So obviously, we can um, completely customize the experience uh, of the device there um, just through the use of widgets and, and so on. Inside the launcher, let's take a look. We have uh, Chrome. Obviously, things like Chrome and Google Drive are going to be there. Oh, indeed, they are. Um, we have an email, uh, Google Plus Photos, Google Plus Google Settings, Hangouts, again, which is obviously uh, quite uh, obvious that that should be there, but nevertheless, um, it's immediately there inside the launcher. Uh, phone playbooks, uh, Quick Office, again, that's uh, quite useful on the Play Store and YouTube. Um, not a great deal really in terms of um, installed applications. It's not bloated out with uh, anything from carriers uh, or indeed any overlays uh, such as uh, HTC Sense for example um, which obviously are an overlay to um, the uh, UI uh, and the operating system um, that would uh, obviously give us additional applications and stuff like that. So it's quite nice and clean um, and obviously that's one of the many things that um, people like about the Google phones and indeed obviously the Nexus branded stuff is that it is a um, clean vanilla install uh, or vanilla version of um, Google's operating system uh, Android. Uh, so going back home um, we let's take a quick look at the camera in fact so we just launch the camera and uh, we just grab the box uh, we'll turn on geotagging uh, obviously this isn't going to be a, a great presentation of the quality of the pictures but I just want to take a quick look at the camera interface itself. Um, so you've got uh, the settings for the uh, auto flash there. Turn the flash on and off uh, or an automatic flash. Uh, we can switch between the front camera oops that's horrid, and the rear camera or back camera as they call it. Uh, we've got various settings scene selections, um, geotagging um, what's this other one? picture size, we can set the different uh, settings there, then we have HDR or HDR plus that is currently turned off, I'll turn that on for fun, um, and uh, which disables the white balance or auto, actually what is that, that's not white balance, that's, uh, I'll press it, there we go, that's auto exposure, changing the exposure, so we'll leave it on auto exposure obviously. I'm going to turn HDR on anyway for the fun of it. Uh, then at the side we can change between the various modes. So we've got uh, panoramic. Uh, what's that one? Oh, photosphere. That's quite cool. In each direction. So that's uh, that's fun. Um, whoops. Let's go back in. Uh, photosphere. That's uh, 
quite cool. Uh, we then have uh, panoramic uh, video and normal photos. Just go into the video mode and we'll just take a look at what other settings we've got there. Um, we've got auto white balance and we've got uh, different settings so we can turn time lapse of uh, the HD mode and store at the location and we will switch back to normal shots and then finally we've got the button there obviously we use that to focus that's our focus point and I'm going to go and quick, take a quick snap so that was an HDR shot turn HDR off as well just so you can see how quickly it snaps a picture so pretty quick uh, that's quite good quite responsive uh, we can take a look that's interesting uh, though I'm looking at the library of those two pictures are taken it's left the video live there we can take a look at the photo again it's not going to be uh, a great representation of what the camera can do um, under these conditions and obviously you're not going to be able to appreciate it through the camera but anyway that's the camera interface um, you'll notice actually let me go back into uh, the gallery we'll move that out of the way let's go to the gallery we'll go home and we can close off that running application and let's take a look before in the gallery and in the gallery let's find some auto backups in the gallery Got the share button at the top there, so obviously we can share for our Bluetooth Hangouts, so we can keep it. We can also Google Plus, Google Drive, email and Gmail. Um, presumably the reason that we don't have anything else in the moment is that we don't have any other accounts set up, such as uh, Twitter and Facebook. So that's those there. Let's take a quick look at our web browser, and we'll use Chrome because it's here. So let's go over to our site. Let's see how we look on this display. Loading extremely quickly, as you probably would expect anyway. But uh, it's loaded our mobile version of the site. It's loaded very quickly. Obviously, see our news of the Nexus 5 from yesterday. We can switch around this way. Pretty, pretty responsive switch between portrait and landscape browsing. Um, text is um, well, it's a 1080p screen. Um, so we've got 19, 20 pixels wide in the landscape orientation so as you can imagine the text is really good to read it's nice and responsive actually the scroll double tap to zoom in and out and those kinds of, kinds of things there so we can go to um, switch to desktop mode and other stuff like that so that's uh, obviously a very very quick look at the uh, browsing experience but uh, I think browsing on these uh, devices with a sort of around a five inch screen is, um, is extremely pleasurable I think actually to be honest with you um, what else do we have? Let's take a quick look at see what video playback through YouTube is like. So we'll have a quick look from my, my YouTube channel. VOD. Let's see if we can find a quick unboxing video. So uh pick one of these, that will do. It's a little bit of an older one. Sounds good, actually. The speakers are pretty impressive on the bottom. Pretty good. Um, skip that. It's loaded pretty quickly, and uh, there we go. Obviously, if we put it in the landscape orientation, uh, it does full screen. And for watching video. Well, that's a, again, that's a nice screen for watching video and for anything media related, quite honestly. Um, I'm quite impressed with uh, the quality of that screen already. Um, it's a really nice looking display. Uh, so one of the other obvious things that we do need to take a look at is we pop into the Play Store, do a quick search for Quadrant. We use Quadrant because we've always used it uh, and it does give us a quite a you know, it gives us a benchmark against the other historic devices that we've seen. There obviously are other benchmarking tools out there, but for consistency we're using this. So let's do a quick benchmark 
I should say full benchmark really, so let's run the full benchmark. One thing that is apparent about using this uh, in just obviously the few minutes I have is how close the screen is to the edge. Oh, I've mentioned that already, but it's really quite close to the edge. Um, so that makes that a nice experience, and you've got obviously the buttons down the bottom there. The fact that uh, the display does run within probably about three three millimeters of the edge is quite nice. But it's making uh, it's going through this pretty quickly, making this fairly easy work. Going through the benchmarking. This is our last test. Our best score we've ever seen is around 21,000 with the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. So let's see what we've got here. That, that's an inconsistent, that's an incorrect benchmark. Let's run that again. There's no way it's out of 8,600. Let's get through this pretty quickly. Some good high scores there in terms of the frame rate. Again here, good frame rates. And the final test. Let's get our benchmark result. It seems a little strange we are Fairly low benchmarks there, which seems rather inconsistent with uh, one with what we're expecting in terms of an overall benchmark. I think perhaps one of the reasons for the inconsistency of these benchmark results is uh, likely to be the fact that we are obviously using the latest version and the new version of Android, so Android OS uh, 4.4 KitKat, which perhaps the uh, benchmark tools haven't been updated to uh, sort of detect properly or make full use of um, and obviously we are running a bit long so just a quick comparison with a few devices that you may already know and uh, have seen so there we go against the HTC One a really very very similar size to be honest with you um, its dimensions are and even though it's slight design keys really key design elements like in terms of the sloping sides uh, and positioning of things very similar really um, but yeah overall size Almost exactly the same, the uh, HTC One being that bit heavier. And again, just for size comparison, there we are against the um, iPhone 5, uh, 5S in this case, uh, just to give you a size comparison. So um, a bit bigger, but obviously a massive difference in terms of the screen size and thickness. Obviously, uh, overall size and width um, there on the Nexus 5. Uh, so that's been the Google LG Google Nexus 5. Um, we will have a full review for you um, over the coming week or so. Um, I don't like doing reviews until I've actually had the opportunity to really test it out and use it properly rather than knocking something out in like 24 hours. Um, I'll do a full review once I've actually had an opportunity to, to really live with the device and uh, use it kind of daily. So I'll have that for you uh, coming up soon. In the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do so. It's twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt or facebook.com slash Tracy and Matt .co .uk. Check out our YouTube channel as well. Plenty of videos on there. You're obviously probably watching this on YouTube at the moment, but check out some of our, our, our other videos that are on, on YouTube uh, and check out other things that are on the site. I'm going to have some photos of this as well. We'll have some nice HD photos that you can take a look at uh, also on the site. So I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on Tracy and Matt .co .uk. But for now, thanks for watching.